Hey everyone, uh, this is Mark Marin. This isn't an episode of WTF. I don't know how I would do this in an episode. I know a lot of you know that we've been on vacation, and since we've been on vacation, we were not able to cover the deaths of two great comedians, uh, Robert Schimmel and um, and Greg Giraldo. And uh, I, you know. I, I knew these guys. I, I knew Robert a bit, uh, you know, and, and I, I didn't really want to be in the position to to do some sort of. No one ever wants to be in the position to do some sort of, you know, two person obituary. I don't know how the fuck it happened. You know, I, I Robert and I were were not close, but I had been in contact with him, and, and we were going to do a WTF if I could make it out to Scottsdale and. And the, the thing I knew about Robert, I, you know, he was so honest about all his struggles and he fought long and hard against a lot of physical problems, cancer and, and then, you know, the liver and, and it was very public. And there was some part of all of us, I think, in the community that, that, that somehow had made some room in our heart for the possibility that Robert Schimmel would pass away because of his, uh, of battling a life threatening illness and, and all the amazing joy and relief. And, and and humor he brought to to people who suffered from all number of things, uh, especially cancer, was just mind blowing. And he was a great guy. I can't say that I was close friends with him, but we'd worked together over the years. And 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 I I remember he was the kind of guy. He's a classic comedian, a, a real craftsman, and a, and a truly fucking great great comic. I, I, I he made me laugh, you know. And he was the kind of guy that I knew he was going to be in Phoenix. My brother, I turned my brother on to him, and um, and my brother wanted to get into the show, so I called the guy at the club, and I left a message for Robert uh, through his manager, and um, so my brother wants to go to the show, and 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 they said, sure, that'd be no problem at all, and I didn't really expect anything, but you know, after the show, Robert, you know, went up to my brother and and said nice things about me, and asked him if he enjoyed the show, and he was just such a fucking decent guy and a nice guy. It's a tragedy to lose him even though a lot of us were prepared to lose him, we didn't think it would happen that way. And uh, my heart goes out to his family. And, and he was just a, a great comic and a great guy with a big heart. And, like, you know, he, he made me laugh. And, and I, there are a lot of jokes of his that, that I, I kind of half remember, but I just laugh at. And I can listen to his records and, and laugh at him. And just weird jokes, like the one about the Time Life book series and the one about, you know, you know coming on his wife's tits. That's a great thing to be able to say in, in some sort of eulogy or remembrance. And I'm going to miss him. And I think everyone's going to miss Robert Schimmel. And, and, uh, and Jesus, you know, Geraldo, I just, uh, I can't, I can't even, uh, you know, you guys listen to this show and you know that even if we don't see each other all the time and even if comics don't know each other that well, that we know each other. And yeah, everybody suffers from this and, uh, you know, alcoholism or, or cancer or, or problems in their lives. You know, are, are comedians any different? Yeah, I think we are a little. I, I do. And, and, and I've known Greg Giraldo 20 years. I mean, I, I knew him when he started. I, I knew him when he was just this pudgy kid who would quit being a lawyer to do stuff, you know, to do stand up. You know, and he just wanted to be a stand-up so bad, and he used to love a tell, and you know, he used to, he he was just always around trying to, you know, just, just he worked really hard, you know. And then as he got great, and he was really great, he was a really great comic, and and a really fucking good guy. And and like I, I've I've seen him over and over again over the years, and and we've spent time together, and he's been on a couple of. um of the shows, we were going to do a long form interview, but you know we couldn't get to it, you know, and uh, and I knew the struggle he had with the, you know, with drugs and alcohol, and and I knew about it, but you know my memories are are sort of confused, and I don't really know, you know, how to go about, you know, talking about him because, like I said, it, it's not that we were best friends. I I I didn't know his family though. I my heart goes out to him. I feel horrible for his uh, three kids and. Yeah, I knew, I knew his ex-wife a bit because she was a, a comedy club waitress at, at one time. and But we knew each other, man. And, and, and Greg was the kind of guy that anytime you saw him, you know, he, he, he would always be fucking nice 
and he'd fucking light up a room and he'd make you feel better. And he wouldn't talk about himself that much. He wouldn't whine. He wouldn't bitch. He didn't complain. I never even understood. I never knew what he was going through, you know, until uh, the first time he got sober and I heard about it and I reached out to him and, you know, and there was no way, you know, he, he, he managed, you know, he maintained a, a good front and, uh, and he never, he never bled on you. You know, he, to a fault, he he didn't really want to talk about himself that much. And he was always fucking just sweet and funny and a giving guy. And the kind of guy you walk in and you see him and you're fucking, you know, you're happy to see the guy. You're just happy to see the guy. And, um, you know, I when I heard about, you know, what happened in New Jersey and I heard that, you know, you know that he was in the hospital and that, uh, and that he, um, you know, they they found him in his hotel room, unconscious. You know, and I was just getting fragments of information. You know, Sean McCarthy over the comics comic was the the first guy to to tell me this happened, and he he put it on his blog. And you know, then I had to you know then I had to make some phone calls. You know, and I I called the tell, I called Colin Quinn, I called Todd Barry, you know, I called guys that were in New York. Some of the guys I came up with, you know, what's happening, and no one knew what was happening, and. Then there were other pieces of information, secondhand, thirdhand. I didn't fucking know. You know, he was in a coma. He was in a coma. It was prescription drugs. Who knew what was going to happen? Then I heard, you know, that there were there were parties going on at the hotel. And, you know, and I don't know, you know, how long he'd been clean and sober or whether he was. And, and none of that shit makes a difference. I knew this was a struggle that that guy went through because it was a, sh- a struggle we shared. And I, and, I, and I talked to him about it before. And I by no means think... That, that he, he, he committed suicide. You know, he, he killed himself to, if you want to look at it that way. But, but let me tell you something. That guy was not that guy. This was an accident. And I, I wasn't angry. You know, I was just fucking sad because you know that something like this can happen if a guy, you know, has a hard time with this stuff. You just know. I, I've seen it happen before to my friends. I've seen it happen. I'm not angry at him. So it's, it's a horrible b- brain bug to have. You know, and then one thing I knew about him is that, you know, he was truly baffled. He's an intelligent guy. He's a smart guy. He's a good father. He's a loving guy. He's got a lot of shit together. You know, his career was turning around. And he was really baffled at at the fact that he could not stay off fucking drugs and alcohol and he tried and and this was a miscalculation you know and i don't know anything i don't know anything but i do know what it's like to be high i do know what it's like to be on a run i do know what it's like to be you know in a bunch of a room full of people that you don't know you know doing that and 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 people who are high make miscalculations we do bad math about what we can and can't take, what we what we've already taken, or what whatever happened. It wasn't on purpose. It was a sad and tragic, horrible thing. You know, for a guy like that to to you know to be found laying unconscious in a fucking hotel room is just a fucking sad, horrible thing. And uh, and I never thought of that guy's ever being dead. You know, this is the other thing about this is that he was just such a fucking life force. The dude was just such a fucking you know. A live guy, you know, he just really, it was always a pleasure to see him. And he was a great fucking comic. And this idea that he was an insult comic, that now he's known for the roast. This guy was an all across the board great comic. He was, you know, he was just, you know, mesmerizing in his ability to talk about anything intelligently. And in and, and, and a great, you know, deep and smart way. He had a great style. And he, he was political he was, you know, he was, you know, he took on topics that people wouldn't take. And he had fucking guts up there. He took chances and, and he was a real fucking pro. And every time I saw Greg Giraldo perform, I was just amazed by his jokes and by, and by the depth and the intelligence of his humor. And, and I just, I, I just, even when I heard he was in a coma, I was just sad. And, you know, everybody, you know, we were all scrambling for information. And, you know, and, and then we heard he was stable. And I thought, well, stable's good. 
that he was breathing on his own. I don't even know what was true and what wasn't true. And, and everything that I said about what happened that night was speculation. I don't know what happened. I just, I just know what it sounded like to me. And I knew what he had to, had to struggle with. And, um, you know, so when I heard he was stable, I said, okay, well, you know, maybe he's going to make it, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's going to be all right. You know, he's going to come out of it. So I texted him, you know, I texted him, uh, when I heard he stabilized, I texted him. I said, uh, are you back yet? Because I thought that when he came out of the coma, that that would crack him up, you know? Fuck it, man. I, You know, I can't, you know. Yeah, and 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 oddly um, enough, when I heard that he was, that he had died, yeah, I, for some reason, my, my first wife had contacted me. She wanted to, to, to meet me for coffee because we're going to be at a family event where some, some of her, she's going to be there and she didn't want it to be uncomfortable. And, um, and I have seen her maybe twice in 10 years and I'm having coffee with her. And, you know, and I left her to get sober, you know, among other reasons, but, you know, the woman I left her for got me sober, you know. And we were talking about stuff, and I told that, you know, yeah, I was a little, you know, worried about my friend, you know, if she remembered Greg, and she said she remembered the name, and, you know, I told her what happened, and, you know, and it's just, you know, horrible. And uh, and then when I, when I was sitting there, you know, I get this text from Sam Cedar about people that he had died, and, you know, and and I I just, uh, you know, I started crying, you know, and, and I, I stopped myself, you know, I just stopped myself from, from feeling that emotion, you know, in, in, in front of her in that context, I just couldn't handle it. And I got in my car and just, uh, I just sort of lost it, you know. And like I said, you know, I can't speak as some guy that, you know, that knew everything about him or, you know, or you know, wasn't at his wedding or anything. But, uh, but I love that guy. You know, he was a lovable guy. And, um, and he, and he fought a good fight with this thing. And he made a miscalculation. I believe, and, you know, he ran out of chances, and it's a tremendous loss, you know, it's just a tremendous loss, and I'm going to miss those guys, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to miss Bob, and I'm really going to miss Greg, and I can't really, you know, wrap my brain around the loss, it's just, like, it's not, like I said, I'm not angry, and, and it just, you know, it, it, my heart hurts, and, and when I found out he was dead, it felt like I've been punched in the stomach, you know, I felt bad for his kids, I felt bad for all of us, because, comedians are a little different we're a little different you know we understand each other and and we, we take this this journey that we're on and we we get in front of you guys and we we try to make it make sense to everyone you know that that you know it's going to be okay that if you look at it this way maybe you're going to get a laugh out of it and you know maybe you're going to you know feel a little better about yourself or at least you're not going to feel as alone or alienated or angry you know that's what we do that's our job you know and you know, and he brought a lot of uh, a lot of joy and a lot of laughs to a lot of fucking people. And I don't think a lot of us knew how much he was suffering or what he was going through. And it's just, uh, it, it's just, it feels like some you know, some elemental, you know, force of life has been taken out of our community here, and it's been taken away from a lot of you people that are comedy fans. It really feels that way. I don't always feel this way with. The, when things like this happen, you know, I, I don't, I, again, I don't know what happened. It doesn't matter what happened. You know, we lost a great guy, a great comic. And, um, I wish he was laughing about my text. And, uh, you know, he'd done the show on the phone. We were just trying to get to that point where we could have a long conversation. So we had, he had him on the phone and, and then he, he was on one of the, uh, the live shows at comics, you know, um, that, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't put up. It was a, you know, it was a premium episode, but we're going to, why don't we listen to that, that part where Greg is on and, uh, listen to the phone call and, and listen to one of my favorite bits of his and, uh, you know, just remember him, you know, fondly and, um, and miss him. I hope he's in a better place. I don't even know what that means. You know, fuck that. I wish he was here. I wish he wasn't dead. I love that guy. Thank you for calling Hilton Garden Inn. This ain't Mr. Chico. Yeah, can I get room 603, please? 
Okay. I'll let him know. He'll let me know. Hello? Greg Giraldo. Hey, what's up, man? Are, are you, is the phone 